Hello everybody, namaskar to all the beautiful people out there. Hope you guys are doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. Guys, in this lesson, we are going to talk about run-on sentences. Let me tell you this much in the beginning. A run-on sentence in English is a grammatical mistake. It's an error. And since it's an error, we need to know how to correct it. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this lesson. We are going to learn everything about it, how to correct it, how to identify it, right? So without wasting any time, let's do it. Let's understand what exactly is a run-on sentence. Guys, a run-on sentence, also known as a fused sentence in English, occurs or happens when you guys add, bring together two or more sentences without punctuating them properly. So when you guys add two or more sentences together without punctuating them properly, without using full stops, uh, semicolons, colons, right? It ends up being a grammatical mistake, a grammatical error that is called a run on sentence. And a lot of people end up writing in run on sentences, right? So we need to know how they look like, how to correct them. Let me show you different types of run-on sentences in English. So guys, there are three, yes, three types of run-on sentences. Number one, two sentences joined without any punctuation. So you have two sentences together, joined together without using any punctuation. You can't do that. When you do it, it's a grammatical mistake called a run-on sentence. Number two, two sentences, two or more sentences joined by a comma. Again, you cannot do that. Two sentences joined by a comma, type two run on sentence. And number three, when two sentences are joined by using a transitional word, such as however, nonetheless, furthermore, moreover, and commas, right? So when you add two sentences using commas and a transitional word, that is also a run on sentence. Don't worry, I'll show you some examples and make you understand. All right, look at this example. I love watching horror movies. They keep me on my toes. So this example has two sentences, two independent clauses that can stand alone, right? I love watching horror movies, sentence number one, independent clause number one. They keep me on my toes. They, they excite me, right? That is sentence number two, independent clause number two. Now what we've done is we've added them together without using any punctuation. That is incorrect. And that is why it is a run on sentence type number one. Number two, you must watch the movie that I watched last night. Sentence number one, you must watch the movie that I watched last night. Number two, it is one of the best movies I have ever watched. So this example also has two sentences, two independent sentences, complete thoughts. And these two sentences can stand alone separately, right? Now, what has happened in this example is these two sentences have been brought together using a comma. Now, uh, is it a mistake? Yes, a comma is not capable of adding two sentences together. It cannot do that, right? So that's a very common mistake. A lot of people do it, right? I've seen a lot of students, uh, my students do it. Mistake, number two. Number three, two sentences joined together using a transitional word and commas. Look at this example. I really want to buy this car. I really want to buy this car. Sentence number one, it's a complete thought. I really want to buy this car. However, this is not the right time to do it. So we have a transitional word, however, and adverb basically, and we got two sentences joined uh, together using commas. That is incorrect, right? So now you know what a run on sentence looks like. Now let's talk about the solutions. So guys, there are five ways, not one, not two, not three, not four. There are five ways to correct a run on sentence. Number one, use a period. Number two, use a semicolon and join two sentences, right? The easiest way to uh, correct a run on sentence is to use a period at the end of each sentence. Number two, use a semicolon and join two sentences, two more sentences, right? Now you'll use a semicolon to add sentences when the sentences are uh, closely related, talking about the same idea, talking about the same thing, then only you will use a semicolon. Third way is to use a colon. Now you will use a colon to add sentences when the second part, the second sentence in that example uh, concludes or explains or justifies the first one or the focus is simply on the second part. Then only you will, you will use a colon. All right. 
Fourth way is to use a coordinating conjunction to add two sentences, right? A comma and a coordinating conjunction. We'll look at all these examples, right? Don't worry. And the last way is to use a subordinating conjunction. If the context allows that, right? You just can't use it. You have to look at the sentence and uh, see what is the best way to correct it, right? Now we'll, we'll talk about them one by one. Okay, look at this example. I love watching horror movies. They keep me on my toes. Let's correct it. Number one, use a period. Simple. I love watching horror movies. Period. Full stop. Also known as a full stop. They keep me on my toes. Absolutely fine. The most easiest way to correct a run-on sentence. Right? Number two, use a semicolon. Now, uh, to be able to use the semicolon, First of all, we have to understand the sentence. We have to see if these two sentences are related, closely related and are talking about the same thing. The first sentence says, I love watching horror movies. So the focus is on the horror movies. They keep me on my toes. The second sentence also talks about the horror movies. So these two sentences are talking about the same thing, are closely related. Hence, we can use a semicolon and add these two sentences. I love watching horror movies, semicolon, they keep me on my toes. Third, using a coordinating conjunction, a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Now guys, we have seven coordinating conjunctions in English. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, which is also known as a very famous acronym, fanboys, right? So, uh, let's correct it. Using a coordinating conjunction. I love watching horror movies. For, they keep me on my toes. For works as a reason, right? I love watching horror movies, comma, for they keep me on my toes. The second part explains the first part. We can use a coordinating conjunction. A fourth, using a subordinating conjunction. There are many subordinating conjunctions in English. Uh, some of the common subordinating conjunctions are on your screen, right? So uh, let's correct it. I love watching horror movies because or since they keep me on my toes. Right now, when you use a coordinating conjunction, you have to use a comma before the coordinating conjunction. But when you use a subordinating conjunction and the subordinate clause is coming after the independent clause, you do not have to use a comma. Right. And the last way is to use a colon. I told you, you will use a colon when the second part justifies or summarizes or concludes the first part or the focus is simply on the second part. Is it happening here? I love watching horror movies. They keep me on my toes. Um, the second part does seem to be a justifying the first part. I love watching horror movies. What is the reason? Why? Why so? They keep me on my toes, right? But guys, let me tell you, if the sentences are not closely related, if the second part does not explain or justify or summarize the first part, or the focus is simply is not on the second part, do not use a colon. Uh, let me show you an example, a great example of a colon, right? Look at this example. Your research paper was amazing. It means the company is offering you a job. So that's how we use a colon, right? Okay, next example. You must watch the movie that I watched last night. It is one of the best movies I have ever watched. Number one, use a period and separate them, right? You must watch the movie that I watched last night, period. It is one of the best movies I have ever watched. Number two, use a semicolon. For that, you have to look at the examples and see if they're closely connected, which they seem to be, right? So you can use a semicolon as well. You must watch the movie that I watched last night. It is one of the best movies I have ever watched. Both these sentences are focusing on the noun movies. So they're closely related and hence, rightfully, we can use a semicolon. Third, a colon. You must watch the movie that I watched last night. It is one of the best movies I have ever watched. Um, you can use a colon, but it would not be a great example if you do that. So I personally would not use it. I personally would use a semicolon here, right? Fourth way uh, to use a coordinating conjunction. Okay, let's try that. You must watch the movie that I watched last night because it is one of the best movies I have ever watched as it is one of the best movies I have ever watched or since it is one of the best movies I have ever watched, right? So that's how we correct a run-on sentence, right? So, and one more thing, when two sentences are joined together using a comma, 
it is called a comma splice which we have already talked about right this error is called specifically called a comma splice yes it's a run on sentence and this particular error when two sentences are joined together using a comma is called a comma splice okay last example i really want to buy this car however this is not the right time to do it number one use a period i really want to buy this car period however this is not the right time to do it now when you use however in a sentence in the beginning it has to be separated you have to use a comma after it i really want to buy this car full stop however comma this is not the right time to do it number two use a semicolon now both these sentences are related right a closely related so we technically logically rightfully can use a semicolon as well i really want to buy this car semicolon right this is example number one sentence number one now the second part is sentence number two however we have to use a comma here however comma this is not the right time to do it simple third i really want to buy this car can we use a colon here now it does not make any sense to use a colon here so we cannot use a colon here right number four using a coordinating conjunction can we do that can we use any other coordinating conjunctions let's find out i really want to buy this car but this is not the right time to do it so we can use a, a coordinating conjunction that is but right i really want to buy this car but this is not the right time to do it can we use a subordinating conjunction let's try that i really want to buy this car um da, 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 this is not the right time to do it i cannot think of a subordinating conjunction that can be used here so we'll leave that okay so that is how you correct a run on sentence now you know what exactly is a run on sentence how it looks like how many types of run on sentences we have in english and how to correct them right very simple interesting now i got to test you guys on your screen are some examples of run on sentences what you guys have to do is you guys have to correct them if you correct these sentences correctly you mastered the topic right and that's exactly what i aimed for so uh write the answers in the comment section below and if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know in the comment section below uh that's all about today's lesson if you liked the video give this video a thumbs up if you guys are new to the channel watching english with afif for the first time make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification icon as well because every single time i uh publish a video you'll get notified right and you can join our facebook group as well and i'll see you guys very soon till then keep learning have fun i love you all you know this i'm out peace